Have you ever seen the beta ratio for a filter and wondered how can I use this to select the appropriate filter for my application? Let's explain it. All right, so the beta ratio is something that's known in filtration technology. It's related to the efficiency of the filter. And so let's describe how we calculate it and exactly what it means and how many beta ratios should you see. So let's go back to you know, filters in general. There are three different types which we can broadly categorize into strainers, inline filters, filters, and magnets. So strainers are for large particles, magnets for ferrous particles, and inline is for our, what we call fines or particulate matter. So strainers are, you know, basically just a mesh. Then we've got the proper inline filters with some kind of filter media, and then we've got magnets. So with an inline filter, most of you would have seen how one of these operates. So we have oil flow, the flow goes through the media, which obviously helps capture some of the fines, and then we have an outlet. Now, we expect that the number of particles that is upstream of the filter is going to exceed the number of particles downstream of the filter. Otherwise, what's the point, right? So we expect U to be larger than D. And it would be easy to put this in efficiency terms. So if we describe the efficiency of the filter, which is another way of categorizing filter performance, then we would describe it as the difference between upstream and downstream divided by the initial upstream value. And so I think intuitively that makes sense. So if we have zero particles downstream of the filter, that describes a, fish, uh, a filter which is 100% efficient, right? It has removed all of the particles. Similarly, if U and D were equal, that is to say, the number of upstream particles was the same as the number of downstream particles, this would imply an efficiency of 0%. So the filter hasn't removed anything. Now, if we have these efficiency numbers, why do we need another measure for the performance of a filter? Why do we need the beta ratio? Well, I haven't really come up with a good explanation, but here's one that I think makes sense. If you think of um, improving the efficiency of a filter from 40 to 50%, and then you also improve the efficiency of a filter from 89 to 99%. Now, in percentage terms, those are both equal. But I would argue that the performance improvement from 89 to 99% is more material. We know, for example, that getting that extra, extra little bit of performance, maybe increasing your efficiency from 99 to 99.9% is much more difficult to do. So we really want a measure which in a non-linear way rewards the top end of filter performance. And that's something that the beta ratio allows us to do. It also helps um, categorize uh, different filters and the, the number is not gonna be linear and the bigger the number, the, the better the filter performance. So what exactly is the beta ratio? Well, it's actually pretty easy. You just take the number of particles upstream divided by the number of particles downstream. How is it related to the efficiency? Well, as an example, if I had a filter which had 100 particles upstream and removed 99 of them, so there is one particle coming out downstream, that would imply an efficiency of 99% or a beta ratio of 100. Now, if I increase the efficiency by just 0.9%, that implies a thousand particles upstream and one downstream. So for an improvement in efficiency of 0.9%, I've had a tenfold increase in the beta ratio. And again, if I improve it again by another 0.09%, I get another tenfold increase in the beta ratio. So you can see how at the margins, the beta ratio gets really big, even though the efficiency gains are very small. Now, one thing to note about the beta ratio is that it is only relevant at a specific size of particle. So a little bit like particle counting, right? We get our three numbers where, for example, the first number represents the number of particles which are above four micron. Well, in a similar way, you will have a little subscript next to your beta, which will describe the size of particles and above that we are referring to. So here, the beta ratio is 100 for particles that are five microns and up. For that same filter, 
might have a beta ratio at 10 of a thousand, right? So it's able to filter out above uh, uh, 10 microns, 999 out of every thousand uh, particles. So there should be a range of different beta ratios that are actually published by your filter supplier. And only by comparing beta ratios with the same subscript number can we actually compare the performance of different filters. Now, one note of caution, the beta ratio is not the be all and end all. It has to be used in conjunction with a bunch of other performance metrics when you go about choosing a filter. So for example, uh, what is the dirt carrying capacity of the filter? What is the surge capacity of the filter? What is the flow rate capacity of the filter? What is the differential pressure across the filter? These all matter. Let me give you an example of why the dirt capacity matters so much, particularly in very high efficiency filters. Going back to the operation of our filter, right? We have particles that are coming in, right? Particles that are going out. Over time, those particles are going to deposit on the surface of the filter media and eventually are going to block all the pores. Now, the more efficient your filter is, the more particles are going to be stopped and are blocking those pore spaces. There are a range of strategies that we can use to overcome this, but in ballpark terms, the more efficient your filter, the faster it's going to get plugged, right? Now, what does that mean? If I don't change my filter in time, that's going to cause the bypass to open. Now, right, because all the particles are completely bypassing the filter, I now have an effective beta ratio of zero, right? Because all my particles are completely bypassing the filter. So the dirt carrying capacity of a filter is hugely important, especially when we get into some of these very high efficiency, high beta ratio filters. So hopefully that's been a uh, good kind of general explainer for the beta ratio and how it works in conjunction with filters. Next time you see the number, remember you can only compare the beta ratios of the same micron size. That's probably the most important takeaway here. All right, this has been Lubrication Explained.